Добрый день. Good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a presentation of the second iteration of the analytical product of the Belarusian Institute of Strategic Studies called the Identity Index. Today's speakers are Vadim Majeka, who is a PhD in cult cultural studies and BIS, BISS analyst. Maxim Stefanovich, political scientist, master in uh, political science and analyst. Hello. And Andrei Rasinski is a cultural expert invited by the BIS. I would like to remind you that we are recording the presentation. The, it will be available at the YouTube channel. We currently have uh, the live broadcast. So if you're watching our presentation on YouTube, please subscribe to us, like our materials, and do not miss our next iterations. We would also like to remind you that we have uh, the availability of the English interpretation. If you select the Russian language, you will hear everything in Belarusian and Russian. If it's the English you're interested in, you hear the English interpretation. I would also like to remind you that after the speaker's remarks, there will be a Q&A session. So please write your questions in the chat or raise your hand if you want to hear you, uh, if you want us to hear your question. Vadim Ajeka, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anton. I would like to thank all our today's guests that are here with us today. Indeed, we have the second iteration presentation today. It is a pilot project. We are happy to have undertook this work. Therefore, it would be great today to discuss various narratives regarding identity. Just like Anton said, it is Maxim Stefanovich who takes part in our presentation. Unlike us, he doesn't constantly work on the index, but since he's involved in the monitoring of various narratives of the Belarusian TV propaganda, and every uh, week for this reason, he watches Belarusian TV, which is quite a feat. I'm happy that um, Maxim will be happy to share with us his experience. He has seen and uh, monitored a lot of narratives there. Like Anton said, we'll have a Q&A. I'm happy that the first iteration was also uh, followed by a lot of discussion. I'll be happy to answer some of the questions from the first iteration. Still, we are very glad to receive the feedback from you. Either in YouTube or in Zoom, you can ask questions. In Zoom, you can raise your hand. Anton, please launch the presentation. I will tell you about the major results that we, and conclusions that we came to arrive at while working in the second iteration. The first iteration covered the, the events of last summer and autumn, the hottest events. Today's monitoring period covers the end of the 2020 and the beginning of the 2021, the cold post protest winter. 
I would like to remind you why and how we are doing the working on the identity index because identity is a difficult topic a priori it's very difficult to um, explain it by numbers there is always there was questions how you measure it and why the idea of our index um, is to promote an objective understanding of changes in the Belarusian national identity through a systematic analysis of related events and statements. Indeed, every word in the statement is was introduced here on purpose. We believe that we have to be systemic in our approaches because sometimes you see good things and bad things happening. Identity is more complicated than this. Our identity index is based solely on the transparent analysis of information from open sources. It means that it doesn't have any uh, personal feelings, rumors, insights, and so on. We analyze what we have, what you can check. Also, in the text version of our index, that will be published in a few days at the this website. There is a link to our tables, a list of events that we analyze. They all systemized, and you can see the system with all the coefficients. This way, you understand how we approach this issue. We combine both qualitative and quantitative analysis. We select the events that we analyze. I'll tell you more about this a bit a little later. We separate them into different actors, into events that were originated by the state, the business or the society we analyze how they affect the identity as such. Then we analyze them with the help of the expert marks that Andre and I assign and using the transparent coefficient system. We have it in the methodology, you can analyze it and see it, understanding why this that event received this or that coefficient. Basically, we have five coefficients that we use, depending on either uh, let's say uh, when people uh, announced a book is one thing and uh, the publication of the book is a totally different thing. There could be a cultural event that was involved tens of people or hundreds of thousands of people. We also measure the sustainability, whether it's a one-off event or could something that could have a long-term effect. We analyze who heard this, who did this, and so on. Next slide, please. It is actually the normative model of identity. We use this to mark that this event, this that event involved with, uh, connected with identity. We use uh, various factors for this. The first factor about the perception of the evolutionary language of the factor of distinct distinctiveness does not mean that the evolution factor the language factor features in every event. And this is also important because after the first presentation, some people believe that, uh, that only the Belarusian language events are connected with identity and the Russian language things are not. We mean here that if there is a event, a person uh, or action, Uh, is connected with the Belarusian language, which is a factor of uh, distinctiveness. Fine. 
if somebody says that Belarusian language is an official one, artificial one, and needs to be destroyed, uh, this uh, not connected with identity. We emphasize on the cultural identity and political potential of the Belarusian people. So we we positively view the changes in the narrative regarding disconnected with the Belarusian nation. So if uh, let's say we see there's a commitment to local identity as no no to the no, we also analyze it. Are there are any models, other models possible? Of course, they are possible. A lot has been uh, discussed about this. After the first presentation, there are Belarusian speaking and Russian speaking. Belarusians, they are, there are Soviet Belarusians called by Slavic uh, red men or people for whom Belarusian language and history are not that important. It is the Soviet context that is most important for, most important for them. Let's say for some people, uh, it is the gender equality and respect for minorities, religious conservative. That is for others, it's the rule of law or, or anarchist. People uh, feel the connection between their identity and these notions. Next slide, please. Why we're limited with the normative model that we have? We want to avoid indicators that may take opposite positions. We cannot say, talk about the gender equality as a mark of national identity, not because this is good or bad, but because a person may take any of the positions or these things may not have any connection with the national side. I would also I'll remind you that the elements of the regulatory model do not necessarily combine all at once in a single phenomenon. There could be one uh, single element. I'm sorry for this long introduction, but I remember there were questions about that. We're going moving to the our graph proportions of uh, scores of the identity index and uh, it's uh, the way it was affected by the business the state and, and the society compared to our first edition we see that all actors the, the identity index went down so the would see that the business the the state and the site used to have a different input into the identity it depends on the various factors related to each of the actors but in general i believe this decrease is connected with the fact that even though there was a splash of uh, identity in August last year, and it is uh, quite relevant for any nation. But in regular times, this index is going down. Let's analyze each actor individually and analyze why we see such figures. Until next slide, please. So, this society, the, the government and the authorities, 
there were 54 events, 36 positive, 18 negative. The final score is 75. Uh, one of the most important events here was the official translation of the labor court into Belarusian. We have this official translation. A lot of work was done to complete it. Now we have the code, it will be available in future. This is a, um, an event that affect, will affect the situation later. Also, the lowest score, minus 14, was given to the propagandist article called by the cruel royalization of the Nazism and white red white activists are uh, uh, sick um, with the plague. Here it's connected with the identities that identity symbols that the government was promoting. The next slide. Next uh, question, what the uh, regional identity looks like? We've seen through the lens of the state authorities. They try to promote it through uh, potential of the regions. On the one hand, it's a positive development. This way, uh, the support in the regional context and the roots. On the other hand, the state media are losing the national context. So the separate historical events do not fit into the national context. So instead of the strengthening of the local identity, we see the, the support of the local lo spirit. The next one is called regarding the state is the ethnography. It is connected with the distance. We had an interesting event called uh, Flourish Belarus, but did not happen in Belarus. Or the state looks at the identity through the historical lens when they remember some famous cultural per persons. In, in this case, the authorities are not against talking about identity, but still keeping the distance. Even in such narratives where we talk about, uh, about people who are important for an identity, it is in such materials that authorities are promoting the narratives that I call the civic passivity. It was seen both in the text of Smitro Gadula. The state thought of said that Smitro Gadula liked the, his country, but how he many times visited the village where he was born. So this way, uh, his love for the mother, mother, uh, motherhood, boiled down to him visiting the site where he was born. However, it excludes the fact that he took part in the first old Belarusian assembly. The same is true about the other civic activists when the thirties promoting the fact that that the art should be outside politics disconnected to politics and the negative narratives that uh, forced the number of the score of the state down is the propaganda about the fascist white red, white flag which repeats the fascist narratives during the first index we saw that today this propaganda is repeating the Nazi narrative. I will explain what I mean. Next slide, please. 
ілюстрації архівних фотосесій, які видавалися у часи окупації. Newspaper published during the occupation times. There were lots of articles like this that show that the state media adhere to the principle that they should demonstrate as much as possible the connection between uh, collaborationists with the white, red, white symbols. This connection was uh, actually unearthed anywhere possible. At this slide, on this slide, we see that the Belarusian Gazette, the Belarusian Gazette, has the white, red, white flag. And this is actually in their eyes, is the connection between the Nazi collaborators and the white, red, white symbols. This narrative is everywhere in the article about the uh, youth, Russian youth uh, union. We see that the, all this narrative were used by the national Sem socialists in their propaganda. They try to draw parallels, saying that your flag uh, is good and the white, red, white is bad. So it's clear why they did this. But in fact, it turns out that the Belarusian state press is doing the same. It is actually supporting this narrative and saying the things that the Nazi occupants said then basically that white red white flag is the fascist flag this way they're copying the nazi propaganda i'm sorry for such drawings but this is just in the search this way we're trying to show how the state propaganda is trying to combine the white red white historical flag opponents of the to the authorities and the fascism in one image, they shown Hitler. It's a typical image of how the propaganda looks like. We're not going to concentrate on how it looks like from the political point of view, whether it's a decent or indecent, but from the point of view of identity, we'll see that the nationalists flag is becoming a victim of the narrative and the authorities especially to say what was said by the Nazi occupiers occupants in order to discredit their opponents even though it remains manipulation uh, again there were not many events connected with the identity. Some of them were marked in the first edition. The biggest score, high score, was given to Svetlana Alexievich, who collects materials, stories of heroes for a book about current events in Belarus. This is done in order to have the long-term effect the analysis and the only actually negative score was received by the citizens appeal to the prosecutor general's office with a statement about the need to ban the white red white flat symbols and recognize them as extremist this which uh, explains Uh, what, why Alexei received such a high score. But this is an image from TUT.by. Since TUT by is currently blocked, we're using the archives or image from the archives. We're 
feel so dirty and express so dirty with tut.by. Hopefully, uh, the staff will soon be freed and the website unlocked. The next, Mr. It was the reflection on the events of the past months that the people were actually involved in. We're analyzing whether it was positive and nebulous and people received a lot of compliments from famous people. Some people said that the nation was already forming or has already formed due to the, these changes, versions have changed. Also, it was done through some cultural events like the presentation of the new album on the free choir or Živi Belarus or Lonely Belarus exhibition in Grodno. The only event that received negative score is this address to the General Prosecutor's Office. This event poses a question of how civic it is, but it fits in the narrative connected to the 1937 when the state media are trying to publish some information or comments about from the interested readers. And of course, these uh, comments are aimed at the criticizing the white, red, white flag. I was surprised when the uh, as B, Belarus Sivodnia, Belarus Today, was published in the commentaries of the people who are quoting this very newspaper. Unlike the comments of the readers, the initiative is represented by a person, Yudhis Shumko, apart from the fight with the white red white flag is also fighting with homosexuality about the uh, family violence and so on it's actually uh, such uh, civic activists are actually cooperating with the state while promoting their narratives and uh, This actually is shown uh, to be a manipulation, like white again, black. We move into the end of our presentation. Uh, in the business sphere, we actually saw only one thing connected with identity. In Orsha, uh, people were. Uh, Join a mural by Vladimir Karatkevich at the initiative of the businessman Andrei Balabin, who actually owns the fifth element store and in the top 100 businessmen of Belarus. Balabin is from Warsaw. He bought uh, a house where Kratkevich lived, not to create a museum. Let's see what the mural looks like. This initiative this person, this businessman, has been actively involved in such work, but this is not a country, actually a new initiative, which appeared during the, in this period. However, we see that This is not in actually count analyzed as part of the index because the businesses were very much cautious about in getting involved into the activities connected with identity. They believe that this is not particularly safe. 
we have this picture. And we have we have seen that uh, connected to uh, that there are businesses that are very uh, said, careful about the uh, identity, not not to uh, get involved and uh, get thrashed by the state. I would like to thank our team members, Ms. Yuriva and Dinko, who helped us collect the data. I would like to thank Andrei Rasinski, who helped us to put the score. I would like to end here and give floor to Andre so that he would share with uh, us his views on the index and what he noticed new about the identity, about the narratives. I would like to note the fact that, first and foremost, if we consider the state, in many ways, we see that the national identity is uh, connected with the local events, ethnographic events or the regional events that are not particularly connected with the general Belarusian things. This is a positive thing. Secondly, I was impressed by the by the huge number of the propagandist materials dedicated to the white red white flag and the chase coat of arms as uh, Vadim said it is connected with the Nazi propaganda it's not only connected but also we see the similarity in the late soviet times there used to be a propagandist author vladimir begun who at first was trying um, to black bad mouth belarus nationalist and then he switched to uh, anti-zionism which is a soviet variant of the anti-semitism in many ways these elements of the Mr. Begun's propaganda, they are repeated in the Belarusian state propaganda now against the Belarusian uh, history and white red white flag. We see uh, the story with the nice Nazis is being connected with the white red white flag and they're quoting anti-Semitic passages. For example, in one of the articles, the author quoted the passages from the anti-Semitic press in order to prove that Natalia Arsenyeva was like that, that she's an anti-Semitist. She is responsible for the murder during the Holocaust. This level of hysteria of the emotional outburst of the, is very high. Another showing element is that uh, we are witnessing the letters from the readers who are trying to prove that um, as part of the box popularly that the white red white flag and everything connected with this is a social evil however they managed to collect relatively small materials on this topic but we feel that there is written as if under duress while other materials are 
written by the top columnist of this Soviet Belarusia newspaper. Um, they uh, look very self-assertive and um, letters from the readers look as if uh, they're forcibly or forcefully hysterical. Another point worth noting is that indeed all of these indices and the amount of materials dedicated to uh, identity has gone down many fold. The biggest number of articles connected and was published by the state media. And the big number of them is connected with the uh, bad mountain of the white red white flags and symbols. The business is, uh, is mm, almost disappeared in the fact that it's not visible. We see that there is a in the that uh, the elements of the this or that identity are not discussed, but uh, the events of the August last year of the mistakes are being currently discussed. Overall, the temperature and the interest to the identity has gone down in all the segments, in all sectors. However, again, if we look at the site, it is uh, playing the major role in the identity description the society very often draws the pictures of the present and uh, what will happen in the future it is working with the positive agenda if we look at the the state agenda the positive agenda is only connected with the regional events like the burial with Mitro Gadulia, which was uh, kindly described in the state press. Nothing else is, is uh, limited to the regions. The, the society is mostly not paying attention to the regional events. It's uh, talking about general things like general past, general present, and general and common future. This is what I wanted to focus on. Thank you, Andrei. Before we give floor to Maxim, I uh, like to comment on the fact that Andrei mentioned Ms. Arsenyeva. This is a very good example of how a propaganda is trying to uh, forming the link between the fascism and the protesters. We'll see this such a this is such a long connection, very indirect. For example, in the um, anthem of the protesters called the, the powerful God, the authorities are trying to connect it with the uh, some negative and the Nazi-linked songs from the past. So the propaganda is trying to do, uh, say some far-fetched things. However, propaganda is silent about the poem by Arsenio called Action, which describes in detail the Holocaust in Belarus is one of the most powerful poems about Belarus. Undoubtedly, they are doing this in, to manipulate events. Thank you, Andy. Right, so I'll give floor to Maxim Stefanovic. Maxim, please. Hello. The topic of my work 
is connected with the analysis of the state channels. I will describe how the host identity and the civil identity as a whole is formed by the state TV programs. Um, well, at first glance, there's nothing surprising considering the realities where we live. The model, actually, promoted by the channels boils down to loyalty to the state, official symbols, contrast in right and wrong Belarusians, emphasis on the Soviet heritage and the military historical narrative. In a nutshell, we see the promotion of the state patriotic model, what is actually in contrast to the other models uh, currently implemented. Here we see the inclination to create moral panic that is not fits this model. Here well, we see the measure of the emotional reaction and attacks on opponents of national symbols and they use the very powerful emotional argument like Nazis for this purpose. The links and re uh, referrals to Nazis are not conceptual in their nature like the understanding of uh, how it manifests itself in today's reality. But Nazism is actually referred to as, as nature of some opponents. Uh, let's say in uh, very often the state TV said that the, the, the propo protesters are trying to teach us democracy. However, they do not follow the democratic ideas and here they describe the mm, Nazi ideas. So that this way they're manipulating the. At the same time, the your own identity cannot be informed based on the uh, deficiencies of somebody else's identity, and the normative model needs to be created. Here. The state channels have it. But it's not enough. Very soon the Chinese tried to search for new sources of the loyalist model. At first, those were programmental events or actions. We all saw them and they were actively covered by the uh, activities of the Patriots of Belarus and uh, the demonstrated Uh, achievements by the Alexander Lukashenko, like the Independence Pat, uh, Palace, including the tours there. There's no use to refer to the older tradition when you have sports complexes and Independence Palace and the Female Forum and uh, others that were significant to in showing the, what the female patriots in the paternal paternalistic model of society looks like. The rhetoric of the people's unity allows to put off the political conflict the gen, of the agenda. What, what to argue with if the people are united? At the same time, in order to highlight this uh, unity, they're using certain rituals, like the civil rituals of state patriotism, like the various tours for young people, ideological lectures, meetings with the state officials, the uh, youth parliament members met with uh, Natalia Kachanova, and also among them, uh, the joint events between the loyal postman and young people. Here we can add the information campaign where the state media live from uh, one stakeholder to another. Around each of these dates, there is a campaign formed that promotes a certain meaning. This is used to support the image of the strong state because every event like the 7th of November uh, is uh, the day when the state can give presents to the society members and to form a certain model. 
it's, if it's a military day, the, the authorities connect it to the heroism of the military. If it's the 8th of March, it's a, a great uh, day to remind people what the women mean in the Belarus society. Historical symbolic aspect of the state channels uh, used to create the white and black picture when the true patriots are encountering the aggression of the West. Here, the words like traitors, patriots with the black souls and so on are used in order to avoid the present and the problems connected with the present, but to represent uh, yourself as a, a person or the, or the side that inherited the victorious image of since the Second World War. And it allows on the one hand to increase the emotional uh, uh, the emotional side and avoid the problems from the present geopolitical level is also highlighted when the Russia is linked to the Soviet Union and the West is uh, uh, connected with the Third Reich. However, at the same time, when we say that any historical date is seen superficially, it, it is done in order to make those contradictions. The contradiction between uh, Poland, Lithuania and Ukraine, which are the puppets of the West and the clean and uh, proper Belarus. Any historical revision or alternative view to the state view is called the rehabilitation of the nazism an attempt to restore the practices hence it is a big threat that needs to be defeated as we're moving away from the today's era era of the powerful belarus we see that the soviet period is received in fragments from 1939 to 1945 the rhetoric of the bssr as one of the united nations founders sometimes they could be refers to the 1920s 1917 1918 particularly when the uh the state authorities and with most of the authorities were founded and other period of this Soviet past may not be highlighted. The activities of the mother of Masharov are not particularly popular in the Soviet or in the Belarusian channels. Pre-Soviet period is also not interesting for the state propaganda because they can uh, glean very little. Sometimes they refer to the Ifrasinia Polska, Kirilla Turovsky, Francis Karina, it is done from time to time or when it uh, actually fits the narrative. Moreover, uh, during the anti-West, anti-Polish campaign, the Polish, uh, Polish uh, state is connected with the negative aspects. Apart from the links to the refers to the history and the contradiction between the chaos and the stability, they're constantly contradicting us and them. Uh, who are us? Us are all Belarusians or uh, and the anchors of the panorama like to represent all the Belarusians saying that Belarusians condemn this and that, or Belarus do this and that, or is it the majority of Belarusians? people who are uh, interested in the achievements of the last 25 years. They're contradicted with the minority. This line of contradiction between uh, and a, a position between us and them. At the same time, them, uh, the West uh, and the people who went, Belarusians who went abroad, 
the state channels, they uh, equal trying to put equality between the Belarusians and the Belarusian state. Let's uh, in this. They say that in order to become the ex-Belarusian, you it's enough for you to go outside Belarus uh, to and criticize the state. This way, they exclude you from the category of Belarusians to become an ex-Belarusian or be fleeing Belarusians. It's contradicted and uh, juxtaposed to the true Belarusians who remain at home. This is Belarusian channel slab geopolitics and uh, present Belarus as the arena um, where geopolitical interests clash. Here, everyone who is against Belarus it works for for geopolitical enemies. Labor here is not a material enrichment or aim to get rich more money. Is something that leads to unity and uh, helps to avoid politics. Uh, Opponents are portrayed as people who are not employed, who have too much time in order to in, get involved in the protest. Anatoly Pankovsky spoke about the uh, labor theory of nation implemented in the frame of the state ideology. Indeed, we see the space of the stability and labor that are regularly supported by the stories about the workers or a superwoman cycle that allows to say that the employment in 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 the country represent that the industrial complex that shouldn't must not be stopped these are the values uh, portrayed as most important to create a disciplinary, disciplined image of the patriot the, who is, uh, that is not connected with the knowledge the, of history, but connected with uh, the credited by to the state as the source of all the benefits. The rhetoric of the consolidation, the unity, uh, is using the concrete achievements and preferences that allow the state allows to get from the state. The unity of the nation is the way to the sovereignty and also stable guarantees like the available health care pensions, which is not obvious in the post office space. So it is this line of consolidation of society members is uh, mercantile and uh, as self-seeking so there's this minimum that needs to be valid by everyone and other issues the language cultural or historical are secondary uh, except the soviet terrorism during the second world war indeed every model requires its uh, heroic side while in the historical since it is the referrals to the Second World War. In modern age, it is the law enforcement official. Before the elections, it was the agricultural workers, but and, and they remain so this way now. But now it's the right policemen, law enforcement, law enforcers in general that are portrayed, uh, put on the pedestal. The subwar of cadets uh, recently were portrayed as the young people, as a paragon of society. But heroic agenda gives way to uh, the new image of the Belarus as the victim that suffered from Chernobyl, from this uh, Great Patriotic War, from the 1990s. This leads to the very special the explanation of the independence. 
the Declaration of Independence is not mentioned, or the Supreme Council activity is not mentioned. It is all seen as the period of crisis, but the true independence starts with the activities of the current political model, 1994, 1996. Uh, here, Belarus is seen as the uh, country that inherited the Soviet past. Integration here is not a threat for the sovereignty. This deepening integration, creation of the new and new integration forms in this post of its state. A space is seen as the way to strengthen sovereignty. And uh, the way to receive benefits for the state. This is very uh, often seen in this STV and Belarus One channel. Other channels are not so active. Unprecedented pressure from the outside of the information and the political pandemic, aggression of the West allows the authorities to show or portray the country as the victim. And uh, which, which leads to uh, the formation of uh, the person as the inhabitant of the sieged fortress. The, the authorities are trying to talk about the values that are not true or true Belarusian values. It's not clear what uh, uh, right and wrong values. The right values are collectivism and patriotism, But in terms of uh, political parties uh, and the families, we see that the indeed the child rearing is uh, done by the vertical of power and the educational system. Here they talk about the uh, 1970s, 1980s, like an ideal. Maxim, I'm sorry we are uh, pressed for time, so maybe you could um, try to. Well, we noticed that the right or wrong of the chosen path for the current TV and threats to the individualism and the hedonism and the digital di dictatorship and fakes leads to the state which is trying to seek the escape and everyone who is trying to oppose, uh, oppose the state is seen as an enemy there are some uh, digressions from the, this panel from this model let's say at the end of the panorama, at the end of the national novelty on our news, you can see um, some stories about some let's say, architectural heritage, particularly that of Radivilov about some um, writers. But it is disconnected from the major ideological uh, meanings, and it's introduced uh, not very often. I will finish on what has happened at the STV. Azarion mm, Pustavoy very often used the agenda of the Russian world, left patri patriotism, conspiracy. They uh, refer to Russian historical pantheon. They mentioned Lisa Darnevsky as the historical character. Uh, 
programmental parties uh, compared with the uh, oppressors and Lukashenko is seen as the major leader. So um, it's clearly we see that they're trying to oppose this white red white intelligence uh, as something that does not fit into the state narrative. In one of the uh, TV programs, more traditional narratives are promoted, and they, this way they're creating the loyalist identity. Very often shifted to the pro-Russian identity. Thank you, uh, Maxim. Let's have a Q&A now. Would allow us to clarify one thing. Uh, Maxim noted rightly that the leftist identity. This, is, this corresponds to the fact that in the printed materials we have regionalism and ethnographism is something not uh, independent, but it's the bureaucratic expressive destruction of the, of the enemy. By this, they mean the white red white flag and its adherents who are controlled by the West. Thank you. Right. Uh, if you have questions, please write them in the chat. I'd like to read those that we received before the our meeting started. There's a question from Bole Saroka. Did you measure and describe the identity before that, or was it ever described and measured before the identity index appeared? Were you inspired by predecessors? It's clear that a lot has been said about identity before us. I'd like to remind you that this is the second edition. The first edition covered the August and September events. It was also uh, published by BIS. But there were a lot of text. What I lack, what uh, became the foundation of the index, is the systematic and absence of the systematic analysis. There were times when of militarization, there were a lot of events that got lost in the information um, flood. There was no systematic analysis. Hence our desire to make one. But there were there are a lot of works, a lot of sociological polls on on this topic made by the uh, various projects and organizations also among the interesting research pieces was one created by by BIS and the Buzma Belarus, I mean, God, oh God, no? there was a research about the identity before the summer 2020. All the materials are available. Those who are interested, please, you can read them and analyze them for comparison. Maybe Andre also remembers some earlier works that are connected with identity that were published maybe 15, 20 years ago. There were some historical books 
and scientific articles uh, featuring this discussions about this uh, actually was started in 1990 but the index as such was not available There were also materials comparing various um, uh, options of various variants of identity. Hope we managed to answer your question. A question from the chat. There were a lot of interpretations of identity. So, what was the interest that you arrived at? Another question about methodology. How did you select the events? And what is an event for you? Thank you very much, Paul. I'll uh, start answering, and but I'll ask Anton to show the diagram from this, my presentation. It, it may take me a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, I'll start from the second part of the question. What was the slide number? Oh, what was the slide about? Yes, the, the diagram, the one with the diagram. As to the methodology of uh, the event selection, uh, we selected all the events that we deemed important for a certain period. We uh, analyzed five media outlets. Delta, as by Belarus today, uh, Monday state owned and uh, independent ones, Nashaniva, Saboda, and TUT.by. We believe that the more or less important uh, statements or events connected with identity must be present in the open. Might, might be freely available, but they reflect various events. Maybe some event took part in a village, and it uh, you can only read about this in the local press. But these events were not particularly significant, as you might imagine. We were monitoring those media outlets mentioned at the end of the presentation. I mentioned uh, Anastasia and Jakub, my colleagues, who were involved in this work. I mean, the monitoring of this media, and they were browsing the media to find the identity related events. All the events that we believe were connected with identity was selected by us and included by us. In the index that will be published in the website soon as a reference to the table that features all these events and activities. It has hyperlisted to tut.by, currently to the archives. you can see for yourself what we used as the foundation. I believe that the majority of the events connected to identity made it to our pool of analysis. Thank you for your question. Uh, for the first part, let's go back to the first part, connected to the diagram. Based on the results, in, uh, from November 22, February 2021, the identity index was 45. Business has 11%, uh, the society 159, and uh, the state 75. 245 score 
compared to the similar period in the past, it went down sixfold. In, it, it used to be uh, 1,493 in uh, August last year. All these figures were not used by us in order to measure uh, the identity as such. All these figures were used by us and were necessary for us to compare the um, contributions of various actors in different in periods and to compare them. Thus, these figures are instrumental. You can read how they were calculated in the methodology review. Hope I have answered to your question. I agree that we are actually talking about the media index of identity. We believe that we it is, can't call it this way. Constantly say that if we see a flock of events or that are connected to identity and end up in the media outlets. If such events happen, it would be interesting to understand what kind of events they are, where they are, I wouldn't be able to say there's a huge number of identity related activities connected with uh, bloggers. If something like this comes up, we analyze it. As to the methodology. One of the questions is that you may have a, co a problem with the metrology, methodology. Of course, we can update this index. Falling paradoxes, paradoxes may come up if the poll continues this the way it does now. And the loyalist. Well, actually, a number of them will go down. Uh, we observe some negative figures of the identity, which is uh, something that happened for the first time. Uh, as I said, this is a pilot project that is subject to update. Therefore, we always welcome your feedback, particularly if it's uh, the involved concrete ideas. A loyalist identity looks in many ways like destruction of the cultural and historical identity of Belarus. Thank you. There are many roles of people in life, various identities. The question is, what is the identity that could be uh, uncovered now? And what is the identity that has received this heritage? It is such a uh, universal question. Maybe Andre could comment on this. It's a quite deep 
I uh, believe that the future will show what comes next. We are not ready to talk about it because too little time uh, passed, was passed. Then we are just observing the process. The new local identity topic, the local chats, when people started feeling themselves the masters of their neighborhood, how it influenced them. All this needs to be analyzed. I uh, understood that this is a field for research that is still untouched. I'm sure that there will be plenty of things to observe, to monitor, and to analyze the future. Answering one of the questions, I may say that as to the loyalist identity, this is actually connected to what the state made. He could have published a lot of mm, propagandist material with a negative identity, but at the same time, there was a big number of the stories uh, related to the regions. And insignificantly, but this outweighed uh, the negatively ranked propagandist stories. Maybe you could also um, explain further what the uh, loyalist identity is. Alexander Filipov, please. Indeed, I believe that there's a difference between the state and the and the independent discourse. The state is uh, looking at it through the prism of the current political activities. If we talk, if they talk about the Second World War, they try to draw a parallel between Tikhanovsky and Hitler. Also, when we touched upon white, red, white flag, they uh, unfortunately lack the uh, discussions not only about current political affairs, but about identity. But we have what we have. Alexander Filippo, do you want to add something? Actually, I uh, wrote a lot of the chat, my remarks and commentaries, and uh, received the replies. This is not the National Identity Index. Talking about those, we have a particular identity related to non belarusians We haven't learned much about this. We have learned about the proponents of Lukashenko and how the Lukashenko proponents view the opponents of Lukashenko. Calling it a national identity index, I wouldn't do that. There's no theoretical explanation for this. There's no explanation of what an event is. Considering uh, what Delta wrote and what they, you me, what you perceive as the event there. You, um, there should be a 
bulletproof theory. And the problem is also that it's uh, impossible to compare what we have with anything else. The perception of Belarusian language as a fact of identity was mentioned today. You said that this is a very narrow criteria. On the whole, though, the Belarusian national identity based on the Russian language exists. As an example, is the Irish case where, or Scotland, where identity is based on the English language. And also the white red white flag and the chase um, and the founding symbols of the nation. This is also doubtful. Many people believe that these symbols are not national, not nation related. In many ways, you are doing this, the same activities, you're doing the same thing uh, as uh, you believe you, the propagandists are doing. Thank you. So, uh, Vadim, do you want to reply to that? Thank you very much for this very interesting discussion. Indeed, I believe if we talk about the Russian language, use the examples of Ireland and Scotland. This is the news about uh, Svetlana Alexievich, which received the highest score. She is representative of uh, Russian identity. She speaks Russian and writes in Russian. What did we mean by factoring in the Belarusian language? Here, first of all, many people who highlight the positive aspects of the Belarusian language and, it's, and how it affects the situation, they say it's um, Belarusian nation is based on the Belarusian language. This is positive. There could happen that when this topic is not raised, is not discussed. There's no problem with that, which doesn't mean there is a event will be negatively scored because it lacks the Belarusian language. Definitely not. And the third option, when Some say that Belarusian language is the poor language and spoken by deaf people. In our normative model, we use the approach when this uh, approach is aimed against national identity. And looking at the Stanley Savage example, the fact that she's not using Belarusian language doesn't prove that uh, she's not Belarusian. As to as uh, to remark about us being uh, using the same uh, approach as the state TV propagandist, is the the question of the normative model. What would be the normative model that would exclude nothing? It would include everything. People who use any language, any flag, people who believe that those exist as a nation, uh, uh, and those including who believe that those are not a nation. If we combine 
all these ideas about Bruce's identity, if we try to include it in its normative model, we will not be able to give pluses or minuses because we will say, state that all the positions have the right for existence. We will not be able to construct any index. Uh, I agree that this normative model undoubtedly is not universal, is undoubtedly there are people and views and ideas in Belarus which are aimed at against Belarusian language, Belarusian identity, Belarusian understanding of, uh, of the white, red, white flag as an important part of the Belarusian history. There are also old local identities. It is a fact. Could this be a contribution to the Belarusian identity? That's a big question. So it's a, the question of the normative model and the issue of the Belarusian language. I believe that we must discuss it further. And I believe we need to highlight the fact that in our model, we're not planning to exclude Russian speakers from Belarusian identity index. Great. Indeed, we may talk about multiple identities. The fact that the, what this index measured is a simplification. It's like a first attempt to make analysis. Secondly, are we the mirror of the propaganda? Well, when we use this identity index, we understood that it does not exclude the red-green variant, because the identity, the national identity, Belarus identity that we are analyzing, it's inclusive, it includes everything. The identity, this is many ways loyalist that we are observing, is in many ways built on the exclusivity, on excluding others, excluding and the focusing on the enemy. This is a different approach. I will explain further what I said. In the index we have uh, Lukashenko's address when he made uh, during the visit his, to the Belarus National Technical Academy. He said, we are currently living in a very difficult time connected with the change and uh, generations. And they said that we need to be firmly convinced that our sovereignty is unchangeable. If we talk about the military in index or loyalist, anti-loyalist index, we would uh, consider this statement by Lukashenko. But this statement received a positive score because in this case, we, he, Lukashenko is talking about the Belarusian sovereignty and strength of Belarusian identity. It is a positive thing as such irrespective of the fact that Lukashenko said that. We know that the author of the statement does not believe that white, red, white flag is a national symbol and does not respect the Belarusian language, but this statement received a positive score because as such, it is not bad. 
loyalist or non-loyalist, this is not relevant for our index. Here we must also consider the political and cultural identities and this the interconnection. And they mentioned that if we look at this from the point by with through the eyes of the culture of state propaganda, it uh, gives the cultural identity put it in a certain framework and uh, does not allow it to go outside. Like Slavyansky Bazaar, Dajinki, Kupalya, and other approved formats where the national cultural issues, national language issues are uh, highlighted in a very favorable way. There is no negative uh, perception of those culture here. It appears when these things lead to something dangerous to the authorities or if they breed certain cultural phenomena. The cultural identity is becoming serving, one serving the authorities, the cultural holidays here play a role in uh, highlighting the role of high officials, top officials or location. So the significance of this format is going away. The cultural identity is merged with uh, the political identity. It loses its own self-organizing side. And what is coming from the civil part is ignored or actually negated. In this sense, we see uh, all the comments about the NGOs. Thank you. Last question uh, from the chat by Dmitry Karenko. The six-fold decrease in the index, is it connected with the decrease in the protest activity? I'll explain how we measure the index. First is the combination of events of uh, three months, like July, August, and September in 2020. And the second focus on what happened uh, from November, December, and January. We did not single out the months separately. We juxtaposed them as period. The contribution to the identity and the one that was before did not uh, disappear. This six-fold decrease is connected with many events. On one hand, it is connected with the street activity observed by us, but it's not limited by it. It's, uh, when we look at the score of the state, the contribution to the identity is going down due to the fact that the propaganda is going stronger, how propaganda is aimed against the protesters. The problem is that the propaganda is more and more combined. It is a problem for the state. But the problem here boils down to how the propaganda works. And the last score by the business is linked to the repressions. We can re remember here 
several years ago when we celebrated the foundation of the St. Popular Republic and Litskaya beer created a special collection. Now the businesses are staying away from this because they believe that this could be seen as a political statement and will lead to the negative results. This in fact leads to the business law having a, a lower score. I believe every actor is specific and special in this respect. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.